Hi, this is uh, Matt uh, from Double Barrel Theater, and I have with me... Uh, I'm Aaron. All right, uh, you might remember we do this thing where we talk about One Piece. It's been a while since uh, uh, we last recorded. Aaron, what have you been up to? Buying a house. Nice! I've been working. Nice. <laughs> like, the vicious cycle. Yeah, right? Pay your bills, you have no money, and you spend your money that you do have on stupid shit, and then uh, you have no money, so that you have to pay your bills, so... Uh, you mean you mean life is just all about working to get money to spend it to work again? Yeah, yeah yes. I believe you. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we're talking uh, the Sky Island uh, saga today in One Piece, which is like the third major storyline. Um, it's basically two arcs. It's... Uh, Mock Island arc with, like, Nolan, uh, Liar's ancestor. That's what I'm going to call him because I don't remember the guy's actual name. And then it goes into Sky Island arc, which is the real fun of the arc. So, uh, Aaron, what do you remember about, like, the opening of the arc? Because, like, think about, like, going from Alabasta to this. The only thing that really stands out in my head before we're actually sitting on top of the arc for Skypiea is um, probably the fight with Bellamy. It's probably the biggest sort of component, sort of setting the tone for Luffy's new bounty, mm -hmm. as well as as well as capabilities. And while you don't know it at the, at the outset, also the fact that you meet Teach. Okay, so Teach is uh, Blackbeard, as he was referred to in the last arc. Uh, he's the guy that Ace has been looking for, and Ace makes a quick appearance in this arc. I mean, I think he runs into Buggy. I don't know. I think he becomes friends with Buggy. Uh, yeah, they're basically afraid to deal with him and he eats their food. And, um, th like, the other thing that happens independently was the meeting of the seven uh, warlords. Yeah, but that's sort of completely a non-sequitur for this arc. Well, I'm only bringing that up because, like, like it's, it's worth mentioning that the world government is looking for a replacement for Crocodile. Yeah. Because Crocodile got caught and beaten. Yep. Um... So you meet all you meet you don't meet all of them you don't meet Boa Hancock you don't meet uh, Jinbei, okay, and uh, but you do meet Do Flamingo who he comes into prominence later on yep and he has like a small role in uh, th this arc as in he's uh, uh, Bellamy's uh, like superior and then. Uh, uh, you don't meet uh, the the goth dude, um, Moria. You don't meet Moria. So only a handful of like uh, like the, the only ones you're introduced to are, are the ones you know, which are um, uh, you're introduced to Kuma, who, yeah. and you're introduced to the reintroduced to uh, Hawkeye Mihawk, and. Then you get introduced to Do Flamingo. So only three of the seven warlords really showed up. I think the important part of that meeting, aside from the fact that they want to replace Crocodile, is to show that while the warlords are theoretically part of the government, because they're hired by them, they really don't give a flying fuck. No. Yeah. It's a convenience title for them, and if it becomes too inconvenient, they'll just drop it. Uh-huh. So it sets up the idea that even though they're considered one of the big three powers, the Navy, the warlords, and the... Yonko, mm -hmm. the Navy and the Warlords aren't really all that closely aligned. It's a very tenuous relationship at best. Yeah, like one Yonko equals like the Navy and the Warlords. I think maybe not both, but definitely at least one of them. Well, no. I think Whitebeard was an exception because he was just that powerful. I think, well, Whitebeard was the like the head Yonko. I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't take down either of the other three, but I think... That was the deal with the four uh, Yonko, just be done. Uh, I think with Whitebeard, it wasn't that he couldn't take them down, but he really didn't want to be King of Pirates. Because mm -hmm. if he did, he would have taken the map to, to Raftel from Roger and just gone. Well, I think I think uh, Big Mom uh, deferred to Whitebeard, so because like what you you hear them talk about him as like even Whitebeard. Yeah, she could have taken down. So anyway. Uh, that aside, so basically, um, this Sky Island arc is like I, I look at it as the uh, summer blockbuster of One Piece, in that it's like a you it it looks like a one off adventure, that it's full of like fantasy and stuff like that because 
they're looking for an island in the sky, and everyone's laughing at them, but they believe their friend, who is the descendant of Nolan the Liar. Mm -hmm. And Nolan the Liar is basically a guy who uh, goes uh, in search of this island, uh, finds the island, and uh, these people are all on there, and he's talking to them, and they disappear. Like, he, he goes away, comes back, and says, the island was here, and none of his crew uh, want to say that he's not lying because they're afraid they're going to lose their heads too. So yeah. he, he and, and to begin with, it's all it's all sort of uh, motivated by gold, right? So he finds the island. And what's yep. interesting about it is it's got tons and tons of riches, and they don't. And value it's got a giant bell. golden bell, a giant golden bell. So the king spends all this money to go out and find it, much like the you know the, the fountain of youth, if you will, from Western yep. culture. And, of course, it's gone. So their theory is that it must have gone to the sky from that upload stream. So that's uh, an important part of this thing. They, they go to, uh, it's called Mock Island, and it's like described as a place where no dreams are. And uh, it's famous for being the death place of Nolan the Liar. And if you look at the island itself, it looks like a half a skull. Yeah. And... It's very important that you realize it's a skull because it's a very su suggestive symmetrical shape. But, uh, so, uh, Luffy goes into town and he runs into Teach, who is, uh, or Tetch or whoever. No, it's Teach. It is Teach? It's Blackbeard. Teach. Blackbeard. This is the guy that Ace was looking for. This is the guy that killed a crew member in Whitebeard's crew. And, uh... You realize that he is the evil version of Luffy because uh, they have the same personality, but they have the opposite tastes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like Teach eats a pie, says, that's delicious. Luffy eats the same pie, that's horrible. Uh, Luffy takes a drink, that's the best thing ever. Teach uh, drinks it, that's horrible. So, yeah. Uh, and they both say to each other, we're going to be the king of the pirates. Mm -hmm. And... You meet uh, Teach's crew, which is the anti um, anti Luffy. Yep, the anti Luffy crew because he doesn't have a swordsman, but he has a championship wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a doctor who looks like Death, like literally riding a pale horse. Like, yep. and, uh, and it it his sharpshooter it looks like a Puritan, uh, and you're introduced to him each. Yeah. And the other pirate crew that's on this island is Bellamy's crew, which is the, I don't know, no fun pirates or uh, like uh, the new age of pirates. The guy wants to uh, be king, not king of the pirates. He wants to be the best pirate out there. And he wants to bring about a new age of pirates. Yep. And uh, because this is like a Japanese book, it, it, it all re revolves around dreams. Mm -hmm. like goals and ambitions he wants a, a society of pirates that don't have any dreams yeah, everything they want has come true yeah because he thinks it's useless so luffy is disgusted with this and he and zoro get the shit kicked out of him because they refuse to fight um uh in a bar one night yeah luffy pulls a shanks yeah and then later on uh, the fight happens again, but, like, uh, Bellamy is actually pretty tough, because he, he handles, um, the, uh, the, the salvage crew get, that Nolan's descendant, uh, has, mm -hmm. handles them pretty well. Well, there's only two or three of them. Well, there was, it was, like, the two, it was the two bosses, which is, like, Gorilla over here and Gorilla over here, I think. Yeah. And then it was the guy himself and their crews. Yeah. So it was the two salvage guys. Then um, uh, he goes bouncing off all over the town, and Luffy with one punch, bang! Like, like uh, that was a lousy sound effect right there. That was pretty pathetic. Yeah. yeah, that one. More like that. So, like, Bellamy goes headfirst into the ground, and he's done. He's out like a light. Yep. And, I mean, it serves, the battle shows, first off, that Luffy's like Shanks, because what you sort of should really mention is that he refuses to fight when he's just making fun of him, but when he attacks his friends, these new descendants, I think it was he's more out than for that. Bluss. 
Well, it was just like, he he didn't recognize him as another pirate, so he didn't recognize him as. And the the great thing is, like Teach was uh, standing right there, and it was like, "You did the right thing, kid." Yeah, which like he's one of the hardest characters to nail down because he is an asshole and he is a creep and he is like uh, evil, but like uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean no morals. Like he's in D and D terms, he's very lawful evil. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, I would say so because not lawful in the sense of like I'm going to follow the rules, but lawful in the sense of I have my pattern, I have the things that like, I, I, I have, have the thing that I want, and I'm going to I'm going to go after it. I don't care if I have to hurt you to get it. Yeah, but he's you know, it also serves as a power sort of step because that's when they reveal his new bounty to be. I think it's a hundred million. It's a, well. They I mean, were making. I'm like 95 like sure because his old poster was. That, well, that was a part of it because they were making fun of uh, Luffy. For being, I don't know, like say he, ten thousand. No, he was like thirty mil. He, he was thirty mil. Yeah, because well, Bellamy was fifty. Okay, and that, so the whole he, idea was that he had gotten stronger because he had just beaten Crocodile, but the newspaper hadn't come out yet. So, and he looked at him. Yeah, he it was like half of Bellamy. So yeah, he was looking at him as a punk, and then it came out that he was like double Bellamy's or close to it. Sixty to a hundred is not double, but. Well, he was 50, and wasn't was he? Was he 50? He might have been 50. I want to say Bellamy was 50 uh, million berries, and then Luffy became 100 million berries. Yeah, so he just destroyed him in one shot. Yeah, and Bellamy couldn't handle it, so he really challenged him, and then bang! Uh, one one shot. punch. Yeah. Okay, so once uh, the Straw Hats uh, realized that they can... Uh, have the guy build him a ship, or not build him a ship, just make it so that the ship can, it. can like, uh, because they, they want to test a theory that there's this stream, it's like a geyser in the middle of the ocean, that happens where the, uh, part of the island is, and it shoots up, um, uh, on a regular schedule. So, they test a theory that if they are in the middle of this stream that shoots up, that they'll find the Sky Island that everyone's talking about. Yeah. Because that's what uh, the whole point of this is, is that uh, Nolan's uh, descendant says um, there's a bell somewhere on this island, but no one knows where it is, and it's a giant gold bell, and he wasn't lying. Yeah. So they get the idea, we're going to look up in the sky, well, they think, okay, if this, if this island was once symmetrical on, like, on the maps, yep. where the hell did it go? Well, maybe these things knocked it upwards. So, Thus the word knock up stream. So they, they decide they're going to ride the knock up stream, and they're being chased by uh, Teach's uh, crew, which they have the shittiest ship of all time. They don't even have a ship. They have a giant raft with a sail. For now, yeah. For, well, for now. But the... Uh, they're also trying to keep a low profile. Well, they don't have a ship. Uh, that, that, that would keep you a low profile, would it not? No, I'm going to look for the four assholes on a giant raft. Like, what's their ship look like? It's four fucking logs. So hey, They had at least five and a half. No, I counted. It was fucking four. They, they took four trees, tied them together, <laughs> and they had uh, the... Mexican wrestler guy on one oar, and I, th I forget who, I think it was Teach on the other oar. Yeah, just going. And going. And it was only two guys, because the, you know the doctor uh, wasn't going to do it. It was it. useless, and, and the sharpshooter's not going to. And the sharpshooter uh, was, I don't even think they had a crow's nest on the top of that thing. I think no, he just sat there. he was just watching. So, uh, they, I don't know, they, like, they're going after uh, Luffy's uh, crew, but uh, they... Luffy makes it to the act, the point of the knock-up stream, and they get shot up straight into the sky. And at first they're like, oh, shit, we died, we're in heaven. Yeah. And then they realize, no, we're on clouds that can support the ship. Yeah, so, so they effectively do a whole rules change here on how clouds work. So there are all kinds of clouds. There's edible clouds, there's not edible clouds, and... Um... Clouds you can walk on, clouds that you can weaponize. And one of the funniest things it, when they realize this is Usopp going in to see how far uh, down um, these clouds are. 
So yeah. he just keeps swimming down to the bottom, and he doesn't realize that uh, the bottom of a cloud is still the sky. Yeah, and he'll just fall. And the, one of the funniest moments in the entire series is... Um, Luffy takes his arm and uses it as a fishing line and shoots it down. And uh, Nico Robin, who was like the one of the villains in the last arc... Who is now a crew member. Who is now a crew member... Because everyone thought it was going to be Vivi, but it wasn't. Nope, they juked us. So, uh, she makes her eyes form on Luffy's hand. Yep. And uh, he, she tells him, course correction, course correction, he's over there, he's over there. Yeah. And so, the Luffy, like, ah, uh, d- does it again, retrieves his arm, and then he uh, catches uh, Usopp, who is uh, mortified <laughs> like that he fell through a-, a cloud and he was falling down into the sky. Yeah, because of course the problem is underneath the sky is the rest of the planet. Mm-hmm. So they make it to a gate in what it, what they're calling Skypea, and they notice that everyone has like tiny little angel wings on mm-hmm. their backs. Yep, like it's it's like a defining feature for them. Yep. And they get there, and there's an old woman, and she's like, "I'll take uh, a thousand ten thousand extol." to uh yeah get through it's like well how much is the next all I don't know. uh so like oh we don't have to pay yeah but if you don't pay you're criminals all right well we're already we're pirates criminals. fuck it we're pirates let's go and they take the milky road i think it's called sounds familiar and uh like they're riding on the back of a crab or a it was a giant animal giant sea creature that they're riding on and uh, they're like, oh, my God, like, there's another island. There's a whole bunch of... And they get there, and the technology, like, the people... Everything's new. Everything is, like, things they've never experienced, things they never thought were possible. Yeah. I mean, like, there's a lot of detail in the arc. I mean, I don't know how much of it's really relevant to the story. It's kind of a weird arc in that it's, like, incredible and awesome and at the same time. You only get like three things out of it. Like inside of Alabasta, you get so much. Well, you, you're in this arc. It like it's like uh, it's not a story that has no impact on future things because Bellamy makes a return in future arcs. Yeah, eventually. Uh, like what they're introduced uh, to um, for the like uh, certain kinds of engines. That yeah, you get the dials. Which are the, good. the dial technology, which mm-hmm. goes into the Mary, it goes into the Sunny afterwards, it goes into... It goes everywhere. Usopp, um... He weaponizes the weapon- shit out of that stuff. Oh, yes. If you thought Usopp was weak before, or Nami was weak before, wait till you check out their new stuff, because... Yeah, like, they get some additional uh, upgrades. Because uh, Nami gets a climb attack, the perfect climb attack, I believe it's called, mm-hmm. and... Uh, with the shells, uh, she gets to, you, uh, um, like, she got a wind climate attack, didn't she, or did she get... It's, it's all, it's like a multi-tool in one. I don't remember all the things it does. Well, Usopp gets a, a hammer, yeah. uh, that he puts an impact, uh, dial in, and yeah, these dials look slams. like, look, look like shells, snails, right, or shells? They look like, uh, like spiral shells. Yeah. That snails would have on their backs. Yeah. Um. And you click them and they do their thing. So that paper mache hammer that he had in um, the Alabaster arc, he put a uh, he put a thing in there and now it actually damages stuff. And then he took uh, and he uses the the dials to make the the Kabuto. Um, yeah, the, or at least the first iteration of the, the first iteration of it. Until he's you know got other technology. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, this arc gives you a lot of stuff as far as you know making the. It gives. People... I believe they call them the weak trio a little less weak. Well, who was the third one in the week trio? I think Chopper? it's Chopper. Well, he doesn't really benefit from this location. Mm, I think he gets a personality upgrade in that later he gets into a fight where he has to get himself out of it. Well, he gets character development, but he doesn't get the bling. Because mm-hmm. his bling, is, of course, is just the rumble ball, and that takes a different kind of place to really upgrade. Yep. And so, so. You find, it's actually neat because you find out about this big sort of conflict going on on top of Skypea. Mm-hmm. They essentially have their leader, their president, if you want, and they call them God. Yep. 
And um, you recently had a change in gods from a guy named Ganfall, who's this old dude that's now sort of just running around doing his own thing and doing good deeds, to this evil bastard named Enel. So, that and the, there's two sets of people on the island. There's the gorillas, yep. who are these like ancient warriors that descended from um, uh, the, the tribe that met with Nolan uh, the Liar originally mm -hmm. then you have the people of skypea who were on um skypea to begin with mm -hmm. now what happens when uh, they arrived hundreds of years earlier was um this is when one piece starts letting you know hey we're going to be talking about some real world shit here but we're going to disguise it as a shonen manga yeah uh so the people who had the wings on their back find out about earth mm -hmm. and it becomes valuable so the gold the dirt everything becomes the gold isn't valuable just the dirt well it's all valuable to them but they have uh less appreciation for the gold except for eno mm -hmm. because he's making a ship out of the gold i think for him it's a useful metal because there's not a lot of metal in the sky uh -huh. and his electricity can travel through it mm -hmm. he doesn't like it because it's rare he likes it because it has a good synergy with his capabilities. Yep. And by the way, uh, I'm saying this out loud right now. Enel, or an arrow, however the hell you pronounce it. Enel. Yep. Uh, he's one of the best villains because he is like uh, a Final Fantasy villain. He's like, um, not Sephiroth, he's... Uh, the clown guy. Who's the guy from Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 6? I don't remember. All right, fucking. He's that guy. He's that evil dude. He's um, chaotic evil. I'm not even sure that he's evil. He has this plan. He wants to go to Fatty Vus, well, aka the moon. He, he wants, yeah, that, that's it. His goal is to kill all the, he, he, he sees himself as a very nihilistic god. And he has these three priests, who are, one of which is very nihilistic. Uh... So, uh, this arc is really um, uh, like a, a summer blockbuster type. It's a popcorn thriller in terms of like, all right, get to the top of the tower. It's very clear about it. Like, uh, that's where Eno stays. You have to go stop him. So, get mm -hmm. to the top of the tower, get through... It's Whatever. very RPG-esque. You get a lot of sub-quests that lead to the main quest. Mm -hmm. Well, what I like about the anime is, like, they, they did it with um, Alabasta, is that they would show where all the groups are on the map. Yeah. And they would show it converging. Yeah. Or diverging. Yep. So, to give you a sense of what the plot what was, was doing. going on, yeah. And... Well, it was necessary in the anime, because you didn't necessarily know exactly what episode you were watching. Mm -hmm. So you might be, you know, three, you might not have watched it in two days, and you have no idea what the hell's going on. <sighs> One Piece does this really good job of sort of turning the entire chaos and finding a point in which they all converge, and it happens in almost every island they go to. Whether we're talking about Alabasta, or Whole Cake Island, or Skypea, you know, they sort of, they all go their own directions. Some As the crew gets larger, there's more directions, and somehow... Because they're main characters, <laughs> they all end up as part of the plot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when one person finds a thing, it's somehow tangentially related to what else is going on. Yep. But in this one, they kind of all stay together. It's a little bit like a railroaded version of One Piece. Well, there, there is a little bit of d division in terms of, like, Luffy goes off by himself, and then, like, Usopp and uh, Sanji get... Uh, into their own group at one point. I mean, they split up to do things, but they don't, like, usually yeah. they're on an island, they just all go in six different directions, yep. and shit happens. Here, their directions are all pointed at one goal. So it's interesting kind of to see a contrast to what you're used to with the Straw Hats, yep. which is go do your own thing because you're pirates and you're free, which is sort of the whole theme of the entire series, to, okay, when we have a goal, we can actually sort of progress on it. So... The great thing about this is uh, very simple in terms of how many villains there are. I think it's four, right? Yeah, exactly. There's four villains, and then you have to. There's a part where you have to win over the gorilla uh, tribe that have all this tech. They have this technology that they're using. Yeah. 
Um, and you have their backstories, which is interesting. I mean, it, like it's about trying to make peace. Trying when, to make peace and doing it poorly. And it's about <laughs> it's it's about peace when one side is technologically advanced. Like yeah. there's a lot of real world parallels in like uh, like Europeans coming to America and meeting the natives. Yeah. There's a lot of parallels in Europe going to Africa and like taking the resources. Very much so. And it deals with like when like sure both sides should be equal, but it's like they're not. It's kind of hard because we could just take it. Yeah. So. Uh, then, so, they're sorting all that out, and the priest fights aren't really, like, like, uh, they're, they're not, not very memorable, Not be memorable, honest. because, like, Chopper takes out the one crazy priest that's, like, he's, he, he's not, he, here's what he is, he's so weird that he's not even entertaining. Yeah. It's like, hey, dude, remember to breathe. Oh, oh, okay. It's like. I can't see. Well, your eyes are rolled into the back of your head. Oops. I can't talk. Well, don't uh, bite your lip when you're speaking. It's like, I just told you guys the whole story. I was like, no, you didn't. No, I heard it all in my head. What is I saying it out loud? No, you weren't. Like, stuff like that. And it's so annoying. So Chopper, by himself, realizes he has to take him out. And he does. Meanwhile, uh, an, another priest gets taken out by Zoro because, of course, Zoro, Zoro would get the they, sword they, guy. They had a swordsman, so of course he, you know, has to fight him. Mm -hmm. And I think Sanji takes out the third, right? Sanji took out the third with Usopp's help. Yeah. And the the that dude was um, he he was an electrical guy, I think. No, the electrical guy was ML. No, he was also like he had. Um, I forget what the hell he had, but, like, he had, like, uh, dials and, uh... He had tech. He didn't have electricity. Okay. I, I mean, I'm guessing based on what you just said. It's been, you know, a handful of years since I read all this stuff. All right, before we get into the final showdown, um, I think the one thing we gotta bring up is, like, the Mary's, uh, condition, like, throughout the arc. Yeah, it's really starting to show tear, wear and tear in this end. Like, the Mary was not built to be a great seafaring ship, and Usopp uh, is complaining in the beginning that he's not a shipwright. So he's fixing it the way he knows how, which is sort of half-assed. Because like, if he sees a crack, he, he puts uh, boards holding it together like a band-aid. And it doesn't really work that way. No, you have to replace the board and really make it functional. He's a pen he's effectively doing, using super glue and duct tape. Yep. But he's doing it to a ship that could potentially kill you if it you know, goes under. Yeah, he like he, he he's driving the car basically uh, that he fixed himself with duct tape and super glue, and uh, like spit. Uh, well, I I think spit wouldn't be as effective as what he did, but at the same time, uh, like this is setting up the next arc. But you see it in one episode. Um, and one now, in one chapter, those little spirit things, right? Little, it's a little spirit thing, and it's fixing the ship, and. If Usopp thinks it's a ghost. He saw it. Mm -hmm. He th and I when I'm watching this, I thought like I because I knew the seventh crew member was coming, mm -hmm. and I thought it was going to be the the spirit dude or whatever, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not really explain. I'll let you guys know right now because just because we're talking about it, uh, it's called Klubat uh, Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Uh, it's Klubaterman. Klubaterman or. You can look up the spelling. Well, anyway, it sounds German, so like if like look up like seafaring creature that spirit of the ocean that fixes ships. Yeah, essentially, it's a sign that your ship is fucked. It's also a sign <laughs> that your ship is locked because that's the whole point. It's like like it's letting people know that this thing only appears to people that uh, really love their ship. So, uh, Usopp really loved the ship. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, it's pretty much beyond repair. It's it barely beyond, barely usable because uh, Klobaterman only did it so much, and once they get into the next arc, they realize like how dire the situation is with the ship. Yeah, that they have to get a new one. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where the shipwright becomes very important. Yep. All right. Once they get through the three priests, they have to deal with Eno. And let's just set up like the situation with Eno because he is like uh, he's he's worthy of a being a new world pirate. Let's be legitimate. Yep. And he's he's building a ship to get to his dream, and he doesn't believe as a god he believes that there's there doesn't need to be any people, like that's like his stance, and like it's it's a very interesting stance to say because he is charismatic and he is like uh, forgive the pun electrifying because that is his power electricity. Yeah, and like just give me an idea like. Like the what this kind of guy is, he does things for enjoyment mm -hmm. because he looks down on people. Uh, th at one point, there were so many warriors inside the uh, island, and he said, "I'm going to make it so that I'm the last person left fighting on this island, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to destroy the island itself." Mm -hmm. Uh, so that he could further his plans. Mm -hmm. And he made a competition out of it. He counted down the 100. Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of interesting uh, shit happened. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff, but it just sort of goes to building up his character. Yep. Because he's not only a, a jackass, but he's also a badass, and he really can put his money where his mouth is. But this is the part where you realize that uh, one devil fruit uh, can obviously have the advantage over another devil fruit. Because his devil fruit is electricity. It's the whatever, thunder, that's, thunder fruit. Yeah, I think that's the name. But, or the shock shock, one of the two. But what is insulated against electricity? Hmm, plot armor? No. Olivia's rubber, I believe. Yes. So uh, one of the most hilarious things in, in the uh, show is... Uh, is like you know zapping Luffy, who has no reaction to it whatsoever because yeah. he's impervious to it. Yeah, it just can't hurt him. Period. So what Eno does is he attaches a giant gold ball to Luffy's yeah. arm, and then throws him down the beanstalk so that uh, uh, he has to come back up again. <laughs> yeah, which I mean is rather clever on his part. It's like, look, I can't hurt you. But I've I'm never dealt with that because pretty much everybody just dies or runs away from lightning. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna take you out of the game. So I'm going to attach, I'm going to use an, a subset of my power, because electricity also generates heat, to melt something onto your body that you were an idiot and punched. Yep. Because, well, nothing for nothing, I love Luffy, but he's billed as a dumb character. Mm -hmm. A genius of fighting, but that's it. Like, Luffy is, like, spiritually, like, mature, uh, not necessarily wise, and that's probably a nicer way of saying it. And he's, but he's not smart. Like, and he's fun, too fun loving, and too naive at times. Yeah. So, so he gets caught in stupid traps like that all the time. He spends half the battle just climbing his way back up. Like this is the Adel's same... entire plan for beating him is simply eating before he gets back. Well, this is the. <laughs> well, I don't think character. I don't think readers realize how lucky Luffy is in the battles that he gets into. Ouch. Because yeah. when he almost when he lost to Crocodile, he only didn't lose a second time because like he, he was beaten so bad that blood was on his fists. Yeah. So that he could actually punch Crocodile with the bloody fist. Yeah. Then he comes up against Eno, which is uh his I can, natural he's just naturally strong against him. He's like impervious. Anybody else would lose. Yep. And Well unless, until you have hockey, but at this point in the series it's important to note that it doesn't yet exist. Actually, no. They you're start wrong. introducing it. It's introduced here. It's introduced, but they only introduce observation. They only introduce observation, however, I want to say uh, uh, Zoro and um, uh, Sanji, up until this point, have demonstrated it to an extent. Yeah, but you don't really know it that. You just kind of sort of see it as a desperation thing. Because, when because Zoro, a lot of people tend to grow when they're nearly dead. Well, when Zoro uh, cut the steel man, the cut-cut man, in... It's implied that it might have been hockey. It's we don't know for sure. Well, it's a, they don't say the word hockey, and they don't say mantra, because they say mantra in this one. Yeah. And they say mantra as in the guy, can, the guy knows where everybody is. Yeah. So that's his uh, observation hockey. Mm-hmm. And... But Zoro had it in... 
uh, Alabaster when he could like cut the sky by focusing everything into one thing. And, yep. he, and he stumbled upon it, but it, they never specifically said, "Oh my God, yeah. he just used hockey." And also, it, it lacked the um, it lacked the blackening of the blade. So I think that they also sort of implied at that point that it was more he learned how to focus all of his strength more than unlocking a power. Well, all right. Well, we can discuss that one another time. But um, I, think I think it's, I think it's safe to say it's formally introduced as a thing here. It's well. It's not formally introduced, but it's sure it is. They introduce his mantra. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like they don't say out out loud. I think hockey was really a forefront thing with the Bowen Hancock arc, or um, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but or when um, they they're introduced to um, what's who's the old guy that was served with Gold Roger? Uh, you mean really? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that guy is number two. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, uh, I mean, that's when they really explain the rules, so to speak. Yeah. But I think that they truly intro- they formally introduce it as a thing here mm-hmm. by giving it a name. The Bo Hancock arc is when you sort of learn that Luffy has a special kind of hockey. Well, uh, with um, this arc, though, Sanji had uh, card casts, or card case, or that thing he does with his leg where it gets really hot. The Diablo Jamble. Uh, well, Conquest is the new weapon that he develops, but it's the same idea. Okay. And we're not even sure if that's actually hockey. I'm going with... The guy is always is... on fire through martial arts. That is hockey. So, in theory, he initially did it by spinning around and creating friction. I mean, I'm guessing it's hockey not only because of the whole fire thing, but also it freaking goes black. Yeah. That's, generally speaking, armament hockey. Well, I'm going with hockey on, on those two, just because, like, uh... Like, they don't say it out loud, but they're stumbling upon it. Yeah. So, uh... Literally, because it's his leg. Yep. And... Zoro develops the, uh... 36-pound cannon. Yeah. Which, it, it's his first long-range attack. He needed it. <laughs> well, uh... It's the, eventually, they were going to have to have a reason why, um... Like, Zoro could stand up, or they have to explain why Mihawk can cut ships in half with a yes. single sword stroke. So, uh, Zoro develops that, um, and, like, for the most part, like, it's a lot of good fights, it's a lot of good, uh, action, like, like, the villains are dastardly, uh. Yeah. No, they do a nice job on this arc, it's very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Very entertaining arc, and, like, th- there's a lot of intrigue, too, because, like, it's a very satisfying conclusion when Luffy rings the bell in the yes. end, and... Like, Nolan's descendant hears the bell. Yeah, and everyone, everyone hears the, the bell. Friggin' planet hears the damn bell. Yeah. And the other part, too, it was... Um, the reason why they needed Nico Robin on uh, the ship was because she can read poneglyphs. I think that's probably the most important thing that develops in this arc. Like, you actually get... Um, they find the Sky Island poneglyph. And that's not the interesting part. No, it's some location for, I think it was Neptune. It's, it's a Neptune or Pluto. I'm pretty sure it's Neptune. Well, I think uh, Neptune is... Um, They're both the weapons. I think Pluton was the one found well, in Alabasta. Well, Plut- well Pluton was uh, was in Alabasta. Yeah, Neptune... So Neptune is the one that's in Skypea. Skypea. But uh, I, I thought I thought the, the mermaid princess coming up in... Um, the, Her father was also named Neptune. I know that, but I thought she was going to be the uh, the weapon Neptune herself. No, I don't think so. Well, we don't know what the great weapons are. Presumably huge, you know. Like they were they ships they and they, des- they described uh, Pluton as a giant uh, as an all-powerful cannon. Yeah. And uh, Neptune they didn't really describe. Like I heard yeah. one person reference like the 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 Mermaid Princess was going to be uh, Part of Neptune. It. Yeah. And the arc was going to... We're getting fucking far ahead, so... Uh, we're we're going also back way off track. The important part of the Poneglyph section isn't the Poneglyph itself. It's that Gold Roger was on that island years ago and left a note mm-hmm. saying, Hey, whoever reads this, you're on the right track. Yeah, keep going. Yep. See you, Raftel. <laughs> Like, there's a lot of funny stuff that happens. There's a lot of interesting character developments. Like, like the girl who has the angel wings on her back. Um, those people, like, the people that are staying on uh, 
like the former island. Uh, now, does the island fall back down into... I don't think so. I'm trying to remember if it did or not, because the whole... Th they act they evacuated everybody. I don't remember falling down, but I, again, it's been a while. I mean, I think if they fell it down, then they wouldn't have been able to get all the treasure off of it. So I'm fairly sure it stayed up there. Okay. I think certain parts fell through, though. Pieces did, yeah, because he was starting to take off with his ship, and it, you know, it sort of caused damage. So... And the way they got back down was... Um, there's like a gate or whatever. There was another gate and... <laughs> In fact, they find out that like there's a normal way that you get in. I think it's from the West Blue. Well, there there was two ways to get out of there. There was... Uh, knock up stream. Knock up stream, which was... What they used. <laughs> well, it was, well, it was an everyone passes or everyone fails method. Yeah. Like So if you made it, everyone makes it. You're good. <laughs> the other way... If you make it, not everyone will make it. Yeah, you have to like answer questions. And... Well, I, I don't know what it was, but it was something. Like, it, there was a thing, but yeah, there's like a normal way to get up there, which I think they said was through West Blue, mm -hmm. and then there's what you know, of course, what our main characters did. <laughs> but and they also say there's other Sky Islands, which yeah, um, there are quite a few. We learn about one later called Latheria. Yeah, and which we'll get into. That's later. in the future. Yep, and uh, so. Then, the way they get down was the octopus. Remember that motherfucker? Yeah, they give him an octopus. He becomes kind of like a parachute. He becomes uh, a hot air balloon that's lowering his density. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, he pops. <laughs> well, he pops, and it takes th this arc uh, takes you into a filler arc, which I'm not gonna get into. I hope not, because it's not in the manga. If it's not in the manga, I'm not t I'm not talking about it. And because I don't know it if it's not in the manga. <laughs> well, with all due respect to the filler episodes, they're all very good, but it's like it feels like a waste of time watching them because you just define filler. Well, no, because <laughs> like there's bad filler there, and there's filler that's better than the the content that they're supposed to be covering. Mm -hmm. I think Bleach comes to mind because that supposedly had like the best filler. It had a decent filler arc, but that's neither there nor here. But anyway, uh, so th this arc uh, it, like developed the Poneglyphs. It developed Mantra, which is hockey. Like it, like uh, it let you in on that. Hey, there is this higher level of like fighting that these yeah. kids are gonna have to learn. Yep. It gave Usopp and Nami uh, like a massive upgrades. Upgrade. So that they're not the weakest. They're still the weakest just because, like, Zoro's a beast. Uh, Sanji and Luffy are also pretty powerful. Yeah, those those guys are beasts. We know Robin at this point is just barely Robin is Luffy. Robin is, like, mid-tier. Just because, like, she can handle her own against anybody, but she can't uh, do everything. She's very utilitarian. Mm -hmm. And she was standing up against, uh, you know, like, when... Like Gandalf and Wiper, who is like the the guerrilla leader, mm -hmm. and uh, Luffy were standing against him, like in the like the gold area. Yeah. So like that like back when it was like the competition to see how many could get down, like they were the five that were left. Yep. And like uh, you know tried to uh, like entertaining himself by fighting him. Yep. So. The uh, this. It was a fun arc, and like, and it was a very simple arc because it was two halves. Yeah. And there was uh, which was I think intentional because they just got off of the Alabasta arc. Yep. That was, I mean, very involved. Was as far as enjoyment, like it was a great arc, but it was just incredibly super long and complex, and so it was kind of almost like a nice refresher to get something simple, something quick. And then we could start up the, the full grind again. Yep. And then... And Water 7 to... to um, What's Water to, 7 um, a fun arc? Water 7, which was then connected to Eni's Lobby, was a lot more involved. Again. Eni's Lobby was fun. Yeah. Like... But, uh, but we're going to wait until the next video, or the next recording for that. Which could be a couple months from now, so... <laughs> or, you know, two, two decades, who knows. <laughs> like, the people that are listening to this on YouTube right now are in a great position, it, like, supposing that we're all done with the future recording so they could get our... Yeah, it could uh, just go straight through. Yeah, meanwhile, like, the people that are 
this is the problem with YouTube in general or anything when you wait for it. It's like, yeah, these new fans, they don't know what we had to go through. <laughs> yeah. Like, when we were waiting for our Harry Potters to come out, we were like, one a year, come on, how hard is it? It's like, nope. That was the worst. <laughs> no, the worst is uh, Fire and Ice. Yes, it is. That's a, true. A Song of Fire and Ice, like, we actually have debates on whether or not uh, George R. R. Martin is going to finish it. Because we're not sure if he's going to live long enough, given the pace that he's already set for himself, releasing yeah. the books. Well, I think that's the biggest problem, is he hasn't set a pace. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to release them to do that. Well, you figure, like, what is it, five books in 20 years that he's done? Something like that. He started in 1993, so it's over, close to 30 years he's done five books. Yeah. He's taken way too damn long. All right. Uh, everybody, uh, thank you for Ow. listening. I'm Matt. This is Aaron, and it's been fun. All right. Peace. Take care.